Yo guys, today we're gonna cover 5 super obvious 3ds Max features that you either knew your whole life or you discovered them just now after 60 years of working in Max. Reason behind this video is the fact that there are some features that you think everyone knows about, but I've encountered seniors not knowing about these too many times, me included. So let's dive into the known, unknown depths of 3ds Max. Our first feature is gonna be 2D and 2.5D snap. Now, we all know about the 3D snap, the button is here, but if you long press, you're gonna get a 2D and 2.5D snap. Now, how do these two snaps differ from a 3D snap? A 3D snap will always stick to any point in 3D space in X, Y, and Z axes, where 2.5 and 2D snap are always gonna stick on X and Y. The other difference is 2.5D and 2D snap are always gonna stick to the ground. So, no matter where you're clicking, they will always appear on the ground. So, for example, when I switch my 3D snap to 2.5D snap, and I click here, here, and here, this line will be projected on the ground, depending on the viewport where I'm looking at this object. So, if you go to your top view, for example, and here I have a blueprint of an apartment, and we have a bunch of walls here, but we of course need a few more walls. So, if we were creating the line using a 3D snap, and let's say we're snapping from here, to here, to here, what will happen, our line will snap to the tallest point of the wall because of the 3D snap and its Z axis, but if we switch to 2.5D snap, and we try to do the same thing, so here, here, and there, our spline is gonna be on the floor constantly, and it's gonna be in line. Now, 2D snap is a bit different than 2.5D snap. 2D snap works only if the object is on the ground. If object is not on the ground, you're not going to be able to use it. So if I switch to a 2D snap, and if I wanted to create a line on this box, as you can see, I can. But if I delete this spline and raise the box a little bit, and I try to use the same 2D snap, as you can see, there is no that little yellow plus icon showing me that I can snap. I can see it here because this object is on the ground, but here I can't use it. Our second feature is going to be edit triangulation and retriangulate. I bet you downloaded a bunch of times objects from the internet that came in a state similar to this one where you have strange things happening with the polygons. And when you try to click on those polygons, you can select them, but when you go in a wireframe mode, they disappear. So what are these mysterious polygons? First thing that you need to understand is, every polygon inside of 3ds Max consists of two triangles. And if you navigate to Editable Poly and go down to Edit Triangulation, you can actually see all those triangles. As you can see, each polygon has two triangles in it. Now, how does that connect to our issue? Well, at first, we had one big N-gon here. And if you click on Edit Triangulation, you will see that Max tried to find an optimal solution how to connect these internal triangles for this object to work. Unfortunately, Max failed here. So, thankfully, there is a Retriangulate button. If you click on that Engon and you click on Retriangulate, it will think of a different method of connecting these inner triangles. Additionally, there is a Turn button here. If you click on a Turn button, you can manually shift those the way you need them. Hopefully this will solve a lot of model issues that you have. Third feature that I wanted to talk about is Select and Place feature. Select and Place can be found here. So let's say, for example, you have this interior and you have a bunch of these props that you need to put near this TV. What would you usually do? You would go into remove mode, move this here, then try to aim it down, and then you need to watch out that it doesn't pierce the unit below. So select and place can help you a lot here. If you click on select and place, you can easily just click on an object, start moving it, and it will automatically snap to any surface. So with ease, you can put all these props within a few clicks. The only thing you need to watch out for is the placement of the pivot. So, for this thing to work, your pivot must always be on the bottom. As you can see, all of these objects have pivots on the bottom. So when you're creating your own object library, I would strongly advise to put all the pivots where they need to be. Fourth feature that I wanted to talk about is Configure Modifier Sets. 
So, every time when you need to add a modifier to a certain object, you need to go to this boring drop-down list and search for your modifier, where you can actually link them here and they can be easily accessible at any time. And to do that, you can click here on Configure Modifier Sets, click on Configure Modifier Sets here again, and then this window appears. And here, you can just drop any modifier that you want into this list, and you can actually expand the number of buttons by sliding these numbers up and down. All available modifiers, you can find them on the left side and just simply add them. Once you're done, your modifier list will look like this and you can easily add Turbo Smooth and continue with your perfect modeling. Our last and fifth feature that we're gonna cover is Create Selection Sets feature. You can find it here. What Selection Sets does is whenever you're selecting something, whether it's a polygons or edges or vertices, you can record that selection. So for example, let's say that I have been painfully selecting all these edges for the past 20 minutes and in the last second I remembered that I need to do something with these polygons here that doesn't relate to the upper ones. So what I can do, I can go here and just type selection 1 press enter and then I can freely move these because they have to be in this order because this is super important. Once I'm done, I just click here, click on my selection one and my selection is active again. The same thing can be done with edges. For example, you need to do this, but then you forgot that, you know, something else is important. So you can, I don't know, name this edges one and then you do this, this super important move here click here, your edges one selection is selected again. Anyhow, thank you for watching. If you learned something today, great. If not, you will learn something tomorrow. See you guys in the next video. Bye.